Hi folks, welcome back to Bite Your Debris Adventures. This one's an adventure and it's also a challenge. We've challenged ourselves to go away for the weekend in the car to somewhere we've not been before and we don't know yet either to try and see and photograph as many bird species as we can in 24 hours. We haven't decided on a location, we've picked five possible locations and we're gonna, we've written them all down on pieces of paper and we're going to get one of the kids to pick out this weekend's adventure, location for adventure. North Norfolk. We're off to North Norfolk. <laughs> North Norfolk it is. After a small crisis, dropping my phone, we finally set off at about half six and headed southeast towards the wash. Hi folks, four hours of driving with a slight stop for some food, but we're here on our overnight rest just next to the wash. So we're about an hour away from our first twitching stop tomorrow to look for some birds, but it's time to go to, go to sleep. Night. Night. Our overnight location wasn't quite in North Norfolk, but wasn't far away. A quiet car park in the countryside on the edge of a nature reserve. This car park was quiet. We saw one other vehicle, but they left reasonably early in the morning. This place was really beautiful, very quiet. The only sounds we heard were birds singing. So after a particularly long wait for the kettle to boil, we had a cup of tea, some porridge and started our challenge. Did you manage to get the cattle to boil? I got it to go! In windy conditions! <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I'm happy. It's only taken half an hour. <laughs> Very happy now. Breakfast, cup of tea, and then. We're just about to set off to our first birding destination. Um, we've slept in the car overnight in a very beautiful place on Marsh Lane on the edge of the wash. We're about an hour from the first um, twitch. Uh, let's do it. Our first stop was RSPB Snettersham. This was just the other side of Kings Lane, about an hour away. We started to take some pictures on the way from the car, as there were many quiet country roads we could stop. But even this early on, we found it was quite difficult to photograph all the birds you see. We'd heard reports of a great reed warbler at Snettersham. This was a lifer for both of us, so we had a look around. We're at Snettersham uh, RSPB Reserve. This is like North Norfolk coast. There's reports of a great reed warbler here and obviously we're going to try and take pictures of other birds while we're here. So the great reed war warbler would be a life for both of us. So fingers crossed on that one. Let's see what we find. There was a reasonable amount of wildlife. Quite a few birds were singing. We were able to take photos of quite a few species in this part of the reserve. Although we soon came across a problem. We found out the Great Reed Warbler was not on the main part of the reserve. So we found some more accurate information and headed back to the car. And after getting lost a few times trying to follow a sat nav, we finally found out that the bird was down a coastal path in some reed beds. So we headed towards it. It turns out the Great Reed Warbler wasn't at the Snettersham Reserve and we're just trying to find it along the coastal area now but it looks quite far away so um, hopefully we'll find it if not we're going to move on to the next uh, location it was quite a walk to the place where this warbler had been sighted it was a hot day and quite windy but regardless of this there were quite a few birds around to take photographs of we got species such as meadow pipit stone chat white throat kestrel and there were also some ducks and waders we were adding plenty of birds to our list although we did have to find the great reed warbler so we ended up asking a passerby for directions to where it had been seen when we arrived there was another bird watcher there with a scope he was very friendly and he let us see the great reed warbler through his scope when he went 
We continued to stay there for a while to try and get a picture of the bird, but to no avail. Right then, we're at the place where the great reed warbler is. There was a gentleman with a scope when we turned up. Um, he kindly let us look through it, so we have seen the bird, so that's a lifer. But um, you can hear the bird. I'll come and get a photograph of him. We've taken some pictures of the reed bed, so we're hoping that he may be in the reed beds. It's very windy here. Um, fingers crossed, we might have got him. If not, we've got some other birds here, so to add to our um, add to our challenge. Right, next stop's Titchwell Marsh. See you there. Arrived at Titchwell Marsh. Um, seen some good birds on the way. Obviously, couldn't photograph them because of driving. Kites, red, kites. red kites, all cool stuff. Um, we're here. It's very busy. I don't know if there's anything special here, but here's to finding out. We picked up a sandwich and a cuppa and headed into the reserve. We soon saw an amazing sight, which was a bittern crossing the path in front of us. This is a very rare sight as they're usually hidden in reed beds. I was absolutely blown away by this. When we finally got to a hide, there were some beautiful avocets very, very close. Some common terns and other waders including godwits. There were lots of black gulls with chicks. And apparently a little gull. This is one bird that Kaylee was really eager to see. So we asked for some help from other birders and with this help we eventually found the little gull. It was sat right at the back of the lake. It was really tricky to get any footage because of how far away it was and the heat haze but we got a few record shots. We mooched around the reserve a little more looking for maybe some more species to photograph. We found some abandoned eggs and there were whole loads of insects including these wonderful dragonflies that I photographed and this amazing cricket which crossed the path in front of us. We decided to then move on towards Chroma. After stopping at a very pretty church, we drove past clay next to the sea and salt house and stopped to take a picture of some ducks and swans. On the way to Cromer, we found out some information that there may have been a Caspian gull on Cromer Beach. So we tried to find it. Hi folks, well, we're at Cromer Beach now. Um, we've heard reports of a Caspian gull here. It's gonna be a tough one because the tide's in. There's some gulls on the sea, um, but we'll have a look for it now. It turned out to be quite a challenge because the Caspian gull doesn't look a far cry from the herring gull and it was also a second summer, so it wasn't an adult. This caused a few identification problems, so we basically took pictures of every gull there in the hope that later on we may be able to get some assistance with identification. This was pretty frustrating, so we decided to move on. We headed just 10 minutes down the coast to a place called Trimmingham, where there are bee eaters. Right, we've just arrived at a place called Trimmingham, uh, or near Trimmingham, <laughs> um, after going to see the Caspian Gull. We're not sure if we've seen it. We're hoping we have. We've got a lot of photographs, so we just need, hopefully, some um, confirmation and yeah. Yeah, help with identification. If not, we're going to go back in a bit to try and find it. We're currently as I said, at Trimmingham, there's some bee eaters here, which are breeding, which is super for the UK. I think it's only the sixth time they've actually bred in the UK, if I've got my facts right. So uh, that should be cool. The bee eaters were an incredible sight. There was about five of them around the quarry, apparently another one potentially in a nest. We stuck around for a short while, watched the bee eaters flying, catching food, landing on telegraph wires, and a couple in bushes nearby. Unfortunately, after a little bit, they were spooked by something and flew off into the distance. But they were there enough time for me to get a few pictures. Great birds to see in the UK. We then headed back to Cromer for some dinner. After scoping out the beach again, 
we decided to head to our overnight destination, which was RSPB Falmere. We saw some lovely red leg partridge en route. Hi folks, we're at our second night overnight destination. Um, it's near Cambridge, it's actually a nature reserve. I can't remember the name of it. We've arrived there overnight. The plan is tomorrow to get up early and get one last bird in before the 24 hours is up. This bird is a hoopoe that's been seen recently in the area, so that would be really good. It's been a long day, we've seen an awful lot of birds. Um, some cool stuff, some lifers and some birds that are certainly unusual to be in this country which is great. We've had a few kind of failures I guess seeing things like we don't think we saw the Caspian gull now looking back at the pictures which is a bit of a pain. We're going to reassess that later on but we've basically walked about 12 and a half miles today and I don't know how many miles I've driven but I've probably driven for geez three or four hours at least today getting from destination to destination to destination but it's been a really super day um, and tomorrow's a new one so hopefully a couple couple more birds before the 24 hours are up all right it's now 25 past 11 at night and we've not long got here so i think it's time to have a glass of wine and put our head down go bed, go bed yeah go bed. see you tomorrow this place was lovely, other than a party going on in the distance which we couldn't really hear in the car, we had a reasonable night's sleep although I woke up very early about quarter to five. I had a mooch around the car park first thing, it was a glorious morning and was treated to some really cool views of hares running around the car park. The hares were a privilege to see, something I don't see very often, they were really close some of them going almost right up to the car as they were running around the car park. Spent an hour just around the car park trying to take photographs of the many birds that were singing just to get our numbers up. Luckily there was quite a lot about. It was incredible how much bird life there was around at that time of the morning. I saw plenty of birds and there was a couple of birds that I saw that I couldn't photograph unfortunately. I did hear a cuckoo but it seemed to be quite far in the distance. Regardless, I got quite a few pictures of some of the birds that were in the bushes and trees around the car. And it didn't take long for a few people to turn up on the car park. I think the first person turned up just after five. So after boiling the kettle, myself and Kaylee headed into the reserve and it was a real treat. This is a fantastic little reserve. There's only a few hides and it is missing a toilet which was a bit of a shame but there was lots of birds around including great views of marsh harriers. A really nice view in one of the hides of a kingfisher and it got reasonably close then it moved a bit further away onto a tree next to some reeds A reed warbler came very close. A 
And another quite special bird to see was a young cuckoo. He sat upon a branch for a while, chirping away, and then subsequently moved to a higher branch in a tree. This was fantastic to see. There was a brilliant high hide that looked over some marshes. So luckily we clocked up a few birds this early in the morning. And although we would have loved to stay at this great reserve for longer, we were mindful of time because there was one special bird that we had to see before the challenge was over. Hi folks, after a very early start today at quarter to five, we wanted to get some species in early on before the 24 hour point. We've had a look around uh, this nature reserve. Um, it's a great little RSPB reserve, loads of stuff, kingfishers, um, young cuckoo, marsh area, really good. We've just hopefully got enough time to go and see a reported uh, hoopoe. Um, it's about 25 minutes away so I need to get there as quick as I can to get that in within the 24 hour time slot. Let's do it! So we headed to the next destination. Hey folks, Oop. hey folks, we're all Iron Maidens up today. Um, we're at, I think it's Hinksworth in, uh, yeah, looking for a hoopoe that's apparently here and showing well. So this will be a good end to our 24 hour Twitch challenge. It hasn't finished yet. It hasn't quite finished yet. <laughs> but, um, still going. Yeah, we are still going. I'm really hoping oh, wow. we get this. Wow. Um, she's wow. seen a church, she loves church. Uh, seen a bit. And this bird did not disappoint. After a quick look at another church, we found the bird in a field. There were quite a few other bird watchers about. It was a hoopoe. It was pecking around happily in the field. And after about 10 minutes of us being there, it flew deep in cover in a tree. But we did see it long enough to get a little bit of footage. What an excellent bird. We then headed towards home. After a quick stop in a field to see a reported quail, which we didn't see, we made a short stop en route at RSPB Middleton Lakes. Unfortunately, we didn't have very long here at all, which is a shame because I'd like to see the reserve. It was quite a large reserve, but we did have to head back. And after a couple of hours of driving and a sandwich break, we finally got home, back to the house and the backyard Avery. This was a great challenge. We ended up photographing 58 species of birds. I'm not sure if this is good or not, but we were pretty happy with it. I do think we can do better though. So I think another trip out with the same challenge to a different place would be a good idea. Let's see what happens. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and please subscribe.